Hello and good morning to our listeners from around the world. I want to welcome you again to another edition of This Morning with So Liberty, broadcasting live from our studio right here in the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., and on KMIT 1490 AM radio in Southern California. Uh, my name is Brian Wesley Johnson, and of course, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I'm joined today by some very special friends and beautiful co-hosts, Sheila Applegate and Candace Harper. Good morning to both of you. Good, Good morning. morning. Hey, 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 we got this great show that I'm excited about. But before we get to that, how has the beginning of your weeks gone so far? So, Candy, how has it been? I can't complain. I, you know, the, the weather's finally getting nice. I'm very ruled by the weather, I realize. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, you know, just yeah. the, the where I hike with my dog, everything is so lush and green and like, you know, it's a peaceful life. After 25 years of living in New York City, this suburban life is very nice. All I need is a sweatshirt that says it's one o'clock. <laughs> oh that sounds good i like that right <laughs> what about what about you sheila i know you got some stuff going on yeah i got a lot going on this week it's really busy but it's all stuff that i am excited about and i i'm just taking it one minute at a time <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. me too me too. Um, a lot of gardening, a lot of, uh, you know, getting the old body back in shape after eating all that food in Jamaica and stuff. And yeah, that's, yeah. Woo. Um, um, but again, like I was saying before, we have a fantastic show today. And I want to start today's show uh, and introduce today's topic with a story from CNN. Mm -hmm. Um Ashley McIntyre had no idea who Danny Robinson was when she heard he was searching for a kidney. He was the same age as her and had already been through so much. Diagnosed at age 16 with IgA nephropathy, uh, nephropathy an inflammatory kidney disease. Sorry that I, I like butchered that, but anyway. <laughs> Danny had been in kidney failure since 2012, the same year he lost his father to brain cancer. One day, Ashley overheard her mother telling her grandmother about Danny. The young man and his mother had just been on a Louisville radio talk show sharing their story. None of his family members had been eligible to donate their kidneys, and the anonymous donors who volunteered were compatible. The next day was her 25th birthday. She got a hold of Danny's mom through the radio host and said she couldn't think of anything she'd rather do for her birthday than to give someone the gift of life. Danny, Ashley and Danny were deemed a perfect match for the transplant, hmm. but that wasn't the only match they made that day. Memorial Day weekend with the transplant behind them, the couple sensed that they had a deeper connection but proceeded cautiously. A few months later, they started a of a formal relationship. And months after that, Danny proposed on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. And they both are, are healthy, living a life in a beautiful, beautifully and totally unexpected love relationship. Isn't that cute? <laughs> like a Hallmark <laughs> story. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And so today we are talking about, do you believe in soulmates? Yeah. And, you know, I want to remind everybody that, listen, we this is an interactive discussion. We want you to to, you know, be engaged with what we're talking about. So if you have any questions, comments or thoughts uh, or you like what we're doing, just respond back uh, on our, any of our platforms or you can post to our chat on Facebook and YouTube and we will get you into the conversation. So, uh, ladies, mm -hmm. do you believe in soulmates? Sheila, I'll go to you first. <laughs> I do believe in soulmates. I've had a lot of experience uh, with various forms of soulmates. So I believe in them, but maybe not as simply as the storyline is often used. I think that it's layered and I'm looking forward to diving into those layers after I find out what you guys do. <laughs> what about you, Candy? Do you believe in soulmates? Well... Uh, so I, I believe in synchronicity and miracles. And I also believe that whatever we believe is true for us. 
<laughs> so mm. I would never say whether, you know, overall the soulmates exist or not for others. Right. It's like, if you believe that there's a soulmate out there for you, then, then I believe you're right. Because what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about life, we make true for us. And right. so for me, I believe that there are soulmates in the sense that there are mates for different areas of your life, your values, and your soul. But mm -hmm. like I said, whatever classic definition there is that you read in the romance novels, right. I don't know that that's, you know, that's not something that I can <laughs> subscribe to. <laughs> but I don't want to take it, take it away from others if they do. Like those who do subscribe to it, I don't want to take that from anyone because some people feel like they're, they met their soulmate. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about... Um, you know, what does it mean, right? What does it mean to be a soulmate, right? And what what it, what do we think about that? And then that dictates for me whether or not I believe it or not. <laughs> because <laughs> um, I, I, think, I, I think I believe in a blend of what both of you are saying, um, which I think is kind of cool, um, where I think as we work on ourselves, that part kind of comes into play. Uh, and I know we'll get into that in a minute, but Ultimately, I am a romantic at heart, mm -hmm. so I believe that the the soulmate come is always there, and and that there can be there can be more than one throughout your mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. um, I I also believe that that there is soulmates in other relationships that are outside of the romantic one. I mean, like mm -hmm. perfect right relationships for. Um, reasons seasons or lifetimes yeah, yeah. and uh, so i think it's a it's a it's a great topic I th i'm i'm again like you Sheila. i'm looking and looking forward to like diving down into this a little bit more um especially given that story right i mean i think um here's two people one is you know had gone through both tragedy and loss within a short amount of time um, and is looking down the barrel of his own mortality, mm -hmm. right? And and the other person seems as though she was ready and open to have a relationship, but was also a giving soul, right? Because how do you hear someone on a radio and decide, I'm going to see if I can help this person? Mm -hmm. um, were there any things that you both kind of gleaned from that story about Ashley and Danny that kind of stuck out to you? Um, you know what? I actually felt chills when you read it and wow. that doesn't happen to me that often, <laughs> but it usually wow. happens when, like right when you started the article, I felt that. So, you know, the, like we talk about synchronicity of her feeling that pull to go mm -hmm. and help this person at a very deep heartfelt level. Yeah. Um, I do think that there's probably a resonance, I, you know, kind of talking about what you all said too. I agree. I agree with every aspect of um, what both of you said, because I think they can all happen at once. You know, we can have a frequency resonance with per people and that comes from how, open we are to love yeah. but then there's there are definitely times and I can share some of those where like things just you meet someone and your life changes in that moment and I I think there's that level of soulmate and then there's also just like Candace said the the mate I actually call that you know like soul mates they're mates mm -hmm. along the journey so what you said with that is exactly true for me too mm. yeah. what about you Candy did anything stand out to you well, it's what stood out is um, the the idea of like being able to flow, like flow with your uh, feminine energy, which is what I believe she did. Like I always mm -hmm. talk about the ability to listen to your gut, listen to your intuition and listen mm -hmm. to that pull. Right. Like yeah. when there's things that are for us, there's some whatever you believe in. It's like whether it's source, it's universe, whatever it is, there's something that will pull. And it's not that butterfly thing that people think they're supposed right. to get. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it's it makes you uneasy and nervous. You know, a lot of people associate uneasy and nervous with attraction. But no, it's like there, there's a pull that happens when something or someone is for you. And what it sounds like to me, it, what, what was her name again? Ashley. 
Ashley, what it sounds like to me sh that she did was she felt the pull and she she allowed herself to be guided by it, which we don't often mm -hmm. do. I love, oh man, you guys are on fire this morning. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I like, I, I totally agree with both of you. It's like, um, and I mean, and the article is longer and I'll try to find it and post it into the chat so, you, so everyone can kind of read it because it's a story from 2015, actually. So this was, a, this was a while ago, but I think it was still relevant where in the article, it just felt like both of them just were just in this flow. Mm -hmm. Um, they both kind of surrendered to what was going on in their lives. They surrendered to what their intuition was telling them. Um, maybe Danny, maybe a part of this that didn't come out in the article was maybe Danny himself was, was saying, um, you know, affirming that like the perfect right situation to help me get through this time in my life where I'm, I need a kidney, right. Mm -hmm. Um, is going to, is going to come about and that I surrender to whatever's going to happen. And then coincidentally, he surrendered himself into a beautiful love relationship. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, um, yeah. I and and I love that that part that even they didn't like rush in. It mm -hmm. might have seemed as though they did, but but from what I gleaned too was they both understood what they were feeling, mm -hmm. and at the same time they said we're gonna we're gonna just take care of each other's hearts as we go through this. Mm -hmm. process it also, right? it also sounds like in the beginning that there wasn't it, it that there wasn't a romantic intention no, like, no, no. exactly right. i think they just understood this there's a, a connection deeper than just yeah um, the the transplant that they really liked like that they really like to be around each other maybe they thought that they were just going to be friends right yeah yeah um um but yeah i i got that too which is another part that that's interesting right yeah, That's because really I think, all, all, you know, oftentimes people believe that your soulmate is that like meet cute that you see on site and you're instantly attracted <laughs> and there's chemistry. When, right, when really right, it's like, right. You know, when I'm engaged in being who I am and right. being true to myself, then I feel that pull. It, it may not be a romantic thing to begin with. You know, when we think in terms of romantic soulmates, like it's an evolution, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And speaking of evolution, we're going to take a quick break. See how what I did there. What I did there. <laughs> um, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I'm going to ask both of you about something, Sheila, that you that you kind of brought up that I think that's a very important part of all this, and that is is the our ability to be open to love directly, you know, applicable to not only the types of people we meet, but whether or not we meet or have synchronicity with either our soulmate or whatever you want to call it. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more of this morning with Solivity. Have you ever asked the question, if I was to be anything, what would I be? Regardless of money, regardless of status, beyond popularity and fame. Living your passion, feeling your life has purpose. Solivity is a space to nurture that which lives in all of us. A place where work can become play and doing what we love creates the dreams of a lifetime. And we're back with more of This Morning with Solivity. Wanted to take a quick break because we've got a lot to talk about in terms of our belief in soulmates. And so, Candy, I'm going to go to you for this, this question mm -hmm. um, around the idea of openness to love, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes we're really not open to love and that we try to trick ourselves into like, well, if this person comes into my life that that meets all this criteria, then I'll be open. Mm. What do you think about that? Yeah, 
I mean, definitely. I also think that, you know, we often walk around with, you know, criteria, right? And I think as soon as we say, okay, I want to have a love partnership. I, that's what I'm looking for. That's my intention. That's what I'm committed to. That's what I have to have. Mm -hmm. And we begin to let ourselves get attached to here are all the things that they need to have about them. <laughs> That's like the very definition of closing myself off to love, right? Because whether people want to admit it or not, love just by definition is unconditional. So if I'm walking around with my list of conditions, it's like cognitive dissonance. I say, I want it. I want love. I want love. But I'm not giving no love. Here's my conditions. <laughs> Didn't we talk about this last week? I think we probably yeah. did. You know? <laughs> yeah, the criteria. Right. Yeah, that's sort of like, like my cat. Like when I work with clients, it's my captain because we, so many of us, have that instant gratification criteria, which is like the roadblock to yeah. actually having love. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. What do you think, Sheila? I, uh, yeah, I think the more we're open to love, the more we receive love and the deeper those connections can go for sure. Um, and I think that it isn't about wanting a partner. That's where we get really mixed up. The, I think when we use soulmate as like there's, you know, that one person that's out there that we have to find and then they're going to meet all our needs because I think soul <laughs> love is a it's a more challenging love. It's a, yeah. it's an opportunity to open to love at a deeper and deeper level. And that is not for the faint of heart, <laughs> you know? Right. Right. You know, um, again, this, it, it, it is so interesting that, that um, our, some of our shows are like matching up perfectly. Um, um, last week we talked about the whole viral video between uh, lawyer and uh, television personality, Evan K. Williams and author uh, and relationship co coach, Yala Van Zant, and this whole idea of, would you date a bus driver, right? Mm -hmm. And I love that both of you are getting like, like, okay, put all the labels to the side, right? Right. Mm -hmm. you, 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 that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for something that Number one, you've got to cultivate in yourself first, mm -hmm. um, which is this deep partnering love, soul love kind of relation, not relationship, but this energy. Right. I want to have I want to have a relationship with with this person where we're cultivating that and then that person comes into your life and then everything else that you need, both of you need kind of gets attracted into that. Right. I think it's okay. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah that willingness to like self understand. Right. right? Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Align with who I am, you know, what's important to me at my core. Like, that's that's what causes that, you know, like with Ashley and I forgot the guy's name oh. <laughs> in that story. Right. Yeah. So it's like what was important at my core, you know, is is getting out and helping that person. She was aligning with who she was, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. On some level, that desire, that pull. And we often don't let ourselves do that. It's just like like Sheila mentioned, like someone's going to come and bring me everything I need. It's like, nah, you're going to be waiting a long time. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Um, um, what do you think people are looking for these days? I mean, we talked a little bit about that just now but what do you think they're looking for in partnership yeah in partnership. like in a romantic relationship yeah you know i think that there's an evolution of romantic relationships that has been happening um because it the form that we have for relationships is based on a pretty primitive survival form like this is a mm -hmm. it's practical raise your kids support the family going back into when we needed those jobs to be filled and now it's evolving into well it's evolved from that into that romantic kind of kinship idea and now mm -hmm. I think not everybody but I think there's a wave of people really wanting to experience deeper intimacy and mm -hmm. that challenge to love unconditionally mm -hmm. And sometimes we're getting them all mixed up, right? And yeah. then we don't, and we, when we try to mix and match them together, it can get very confusing. Yeah, that is very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the leftover dregs of, 
of you know what was um sort of assigned to us i guess yeah. and when i say us i mean generationally it's right. like you know you you knew who you were in your family and mm -hmm. what was expected of you mm -hmm. and what tradition was and that you had to survive right, right? Mm -hmm. as what as, no matter the gender and so people were trying to follow a set of rules it was less about being able to have romantic relationships and have that be the priority and i think we're kind of still very juvenile in the process as a human race yeah. because we're in a place of, it's like everything else. Let me just gratify myself. Right. Yeah, and, right? and it's not, it's not like everything yeah. else. It's like we're evolving into an understanding that, you know, like Sheila mentioned that there's an unconditionality that's required. And so I think that's, that's where we are. We're evolving into that. And some of us have not evolved very far <laughs> <laughs> because we still like, you know, really want someone to, to fix it and make it all better and heal our stories and, you know, without us having to do it. Right. And then others of us, I think, you know, we're, we're trying to wake up to, you know, who do I, who do I need to be to be a space for all I want to experience. Right. Yeah. I love that. Um, I, you know, when, I tell people when we have conversations about like relationships and when people are like, like, listen, having some material wealth and all that. Yes. It's an important part of our human ex experience, right? You need money to be able to buy food, you know, keep shelter and water and all these necessities, right? Mm -hmm. Those are our basic needs, right? In terms of that Maslow's hierarchy of needs back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you say that that people have to have a certain type of those things to make you feel good about being in a relationship with them, that's not about those things anymore. Mm -hmm. That's about the unmet needs that lie beneath all of that, that are driving you toward trying to find somebody like that. And it's and it's and it's also true for men like men get get um uh, uh into this whole like trophy kind of thing right like i've got to have a woman that looks a certain way acts a certain way and dresses a certain way and all this it's the same deal right mm -hmm. where there's something up underneath all that that you're wanting and that that's the focus right the focus that you should be that you should be lending into is that energy like what's going on there what's up under as as uh, a therapist of mine used to say, what's up underneath the boat, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of things, you know, um, Candace, you were talking about this idea of, of our families and, and, mm -hmm. the, and that whole pathology that's there. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit more about that, right? Um, you know, I'm not going to take a break right now. I want to keep continue this conversation because I think a lot of that has to do with like how we're socialized to believe about love relationships and even this soulmate thing where we were sold the bill of goods on the whole Cinderella story, men and women mm -hmm. and other and other orientations. It's like, you know, you meet this person and everything is is wonderful from now mm -hmm. until forever. And that is that is not the truth. And when you find out it's not the truth, you're like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that a little bit. Candy, what do you what what say you what what do you tell what are you telling clients? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, in my own experience, I was in a 13 year relationship uh, right overlapping like the end of college. Mm, right. Mm -hmm. and, and I can remember at that age, especially, you know, being like I was so obsessed with love and romance, really feeling like I had met my soulmate. And as I look back in hindsight, what I realize is, and as much as I did love this person, th what it was is that they ticked a lot of boxes as far as what I thought I was supposed to want based on how I was raised and conditioned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Like they were on there. They became a surgeon there. He's an orthopedic surgeon. Now we still have, you know, a, a, a polite friendship. So I kind of know what's going on with him. But, you know, he just was about a lot of things, getting his life together right. and, you know, just a smart guy. And he fit all he ticked all the things that my mother would have wanted for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I look back on that, there's nothing wrong with any of right, it. Right. But we were not 
destined to have sustainability because there were so many other things that inherently just didn't match up and not in any sort of contentious way. Like he came from a Muslim family and he was devout in his religion. I was never going to convert to Islam. Right, 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 right. I cannot <laughs> you know? I can't had, see that. <laughs> right? He had certain visions in mind for what his life was going to look like. He now lives in Afghanistan. Oh. I was never going to live in Afghanistan. <laughs> wow. wow. You know, and and the family that he came from, there was a lot of restriction within their culture, their traditions and things like that. And so, you know, I'd say all of that to say um, to your, wait, tell me again, your original well, question. You're going to, so like, like he had his belief system that was passed down and that he was socialized to believe from his family. And you had the same in, in your own way. Yeah. And so, yeah, gosh, Afghan, I cannot see you in Afghanistan. Right. <laughs> but that, I think that's what sometimes people sort of confuse with, you know, how is this person a mate? Yeah. Right. Or whether I can sustain with this person. And what we right. gave each other was a lot of love and care. We helped each other through, you know, uh, undergraduate school, graduate school. You know, we developed an affinity and a friendship that is lifelong. Like if he called me and was like, I need help with something, I would be mm -hmm whatever he would need, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. also the understanding that our parting of the ways was um, necessary for the trajectory that each of us needed to go on. Right. And we get right. so caught up in feeling like we got to find this person that is our forever person, lock ourselves down and be together forever. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Like you were saying, and, and, you know, we being cognizant of that, that's not necessarily how it works is part of what eases the the heartache and the pain and the turmoil mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, everybody mm -hmm. we need is a mate to our soul a mirror to how we can grow mm, 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 yeah. mm, mm. sheila what are you thinking right now i'm thinking about that mirror and how deep really all of our partnerships are mm -hmm. about our own soul love of ourself and how we can grow as a being of love and open up more deeply um, and become more of who we are. And throughout our life, different people will be the perfect partner for that, whether it's romantic or in other ways. Yeah. Um, and I think we really get confused that love is unconditional. Mm -hmm. Like is conditional. <laughs> right, right, right. It, right. Like is conditional. And so is the form of the relationships we choose, yeah. depending on what we choose. We can make them as less um, conditional or more conditional based on our paradigm. But it is ultimately a gateway to me. Every soul relationship that I've had, deep, deep soul relationships that have, you know, changed me and helped me love bigger they're all um they're also the pathway to me in my union with the divine mm. Mm. yeah yeah okay. isn't that a beautiful thing yeah that yeah. when when <laughs> you when you when number one when you connect and are practicing um self-awareness but more spiritual awareness around your connection with the divine and then you you that leads you and attracts you to you know to being in a love relationship that is a mirror of that relationship it just increases your connection which goes to everything else and the relationship bears fruit that you never could have imagined before yeah. it came along, mm -hmm. right? And some, and sometimes soulmates are showing you how disconnected you are. <laughs> well, and, and then, that's their, ooh, right? Yeah, ooh, let's talk about that part. Oh, yeah. um, because I think, you know, <laughs> this concept of reason, season, or lifetime, right? Um, mm -hmm. Where people <laughs> flow in and out of your life uh, for reasons, seasons, or lifetimes. And they all have beautiful gifts to give to you. Um, sometimes, sometimes, like you said, Sheila, it's, it's a mirror and it's this, this connection of how you're connected and growing that connection and being in the flow. And then other times, as you said, Candy, mm -hmm. it's, it's the opposite. It is, um, Hey, uh, Hey, boyfriend, girlfriend, um, you're not connected right now. 
in fact, mm-hmm. you're kind of moving away. So I'm going to kind of like support you in moving into the flow. And sometimes that means that, that you leave or the other person, because you could be the mirror, the opposite for the other person. And that person leaves. Right. Or sometimes it, it, it's a staying. Like I was yes. in an yeah. abusive relationship for about, I would say four and a half years. And it took it took a minute for me to get that this person, what this person was mirroring to me was the relationship that I have with my with myself, had with myself at that time when we right. met. And the blessing and all of that, and the reason that I will forever be grateful for how batshit crazy he was, <laughs> was <laughs> it showed me how batshit crazy I was and how I was so disconnected from source. Wow. Right. And it deepened my ability when I when I the moment I realized that it, what it deepened was my ability to get reconnected in such a colossal way that someone who came along and was right, you know, flowing in alignment with me might not have been able to cause that kind of effect. Right. You know, but it's always a mirror, whether you're having a, a negative, positive, low vibrational or high vibrational experience. It's always a mirror. <laughs> oh man i i remember talking about that i'm you know i'm remembering early in my my days of like dating and all that kind of stuff you know you meet that one <laughs> and, and as i told as i told <laughs> my son i said it's a you, you ain't a man unless unless somebody broke your heart mm. and you sing in the blues and you're crying <laughs> Because you're <laughs> opening yourself up to that part of yourself that really, really wants to be to, to, to be loved, right? Mm-hmm. To really feel that love. And it just drives you, for me, for, for a minute, it was driving me outer, outward a little bit. And then I had to learn to go inward. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's hard. It's yeah. hard sometimes. It is. Yeah, mm, mm. It's, it's what we came here for, you know. It yeah. is right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's, that's what why we came. Right? Exactly, exactly. Why don't we take a Why don't we take another quick break? Um, and when we come back, um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about, you know, let's make this turn and talk a little bit more about, like, you know, how what do we need to do? What do we need to do to, um. As my mom would say, as you both love, you both love my mom. She would say, how do we prepare ourselves for soulmates to come into our lives, Mm -hmm. right? Because I think that's where the disconnect is, right? Where Mm -hmm. we, we, we're waiting for them to fix us and we're supposed to quote unquote, fix ourselves and attract them to us, Mm -hmm. right? So why don't we take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk more about soulmates and all kind of things, love relationships, and a whole lot more. We'll be back in about, oh, about a minute or so. Find all the Satana products at our Go Shop on Solivity at go.solivity.com now. Shop for beauty products, skin care, hair care. It is all there at the Go Shop. Go Shop Solivity. And we're back with more of this morning with Solivity. We are talking about soulmates. <laughs> a song, a song called like Soulmates. I think it's like, in a lot of songs, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which would make sense. Sheila, you had a story that you wanted to share um, in regards to this. Yeah, I think this is. I, I mean, I've had the fortune of being with um, several deep soulmates in my lifetime. And I just think one story that I want to share with you today that is such a reflection of everything we've been talking about 
almost 20 years ago, somebody walked into my office to um, have a healing, um, which is normal. Mm -hmm. He he was coming to get um, to see if he could go on to get his Reiki master with me. But um, I didn't know him. And I started my session just like I always do. Mm -hmm. And when I got to his feet, all of a sudden, I got flashes of like, uh, if people have heard of the Akashic Records, it's like all of our lifetimes and all of our life plans. It's a symbol for that. And the book was like flipping like crazy. And they're saying, <laughs> <laughs> and, they, <laughs> and the guides are like, you have to decide what you want to do. And I'm like, this is a stranger. I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> I, I couldn't even tell him what was happening, you know. <laughs> Woohoo! And finally, what lit your fire. <laughs> right? <laughs> Finally, I was like, okay, whatever we decided before we came down, that's what we'll do. And the book slammed and everything calmed down. And I was just like, oh, man. (laughs) Wow. It's now almost 20 years later. And our relationship has not gone into a like a typical form of a romantic relationship, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but we have come and gone. We've been mad at each other. We've loved Mm -hmm. each other deeply and we're still growing as individuals because of this partnership. And recently we've been able to say like, Hey, whatever decision we made that day, we did the right thing. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's really cool. Sheila. Yeah. And and so, you know, when you think of that, it, I think it's so important because it is about being ready, like you were going to move towards. Mm-hmm. And also it's about not attaching it. Right. If we had mm-hmm. ever tried to put it into a specific form um, uh, in the in those days, especially, I think we would have exploded, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, you know, again, from that story that we said earlier, where the the Ashley and Danny the the they proceeded cautiously right mm-hmm. and i think mm-hmm. more so i think you could equate that to they proceeded intuitively mm-hmm. and let what was going to unfold about their relationship unfold right and, right um candy how do we prepare how do we you know cuz we talked about soulmates in the in the instant i think we all agree that that the first that this first step is kind of like about like becoming aware of ourselves but what does that mean yeah so i mean i I like what you said about unfolding right because often i think we think that there's some perfect person that we need to be or yeah. some pinnacle we need to reach yeah. in order to prepare for whatever comes along in life, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I really think that the preparation is just the willingness to explore, and I say this often, explore what is really most important to me at my soul. Mm-hmm. So oftentimes we go by what we're told that's supposed to be important to us, you know, and that's the house, the car, the, you know, the career, the, you know, whatever family you come from, whatever their demands are, Mm -hmm. or we see what's supposed to be important to us in our media and movies and things like that. Mm -hmm. But the preparation is just exploring, like if I'm quiet and it's not about the noise of what everyone is telling me or what I'm, you know, watching on Netflix or whatever, like I'm trying to have a Bridgerton moment, whatever, (laughs) if I'm just quiet, (laughs) And just say, like, you know, what is it that that I really want to experience? What is it that would would if I create it, if I generate it, if I share it with someone else would have me know that I'm living authentically into who I am and I'm purposeful and I'm doing what I came here to do. Mm. I'm willing to ask myself that question. I can just let myself explore that. So what is it that lights me up? What is it that makes me feel like I'm making a difference? And if I don't care about making a difference for someone else, what is it that makes me feel like I'm making a difference for myself? Because even the willing to do that makes a difference for other people, right? Yeah. It's I, the I, questioning. Yeah. And and Sheila, isn't that what we want to give to people in the relationship? Don't we right. want to give them our authentic self where we're not pretending, we're not 
you know, acting out what we were taught that we should be and all that. We're just open, yeah. right? I think that's our ultimate goal as humans. I think that that's our deepest desire is yeah. to be seen and understood mm -hmm. on a deep level. I think that that's why we put so many rules around a romantic relationship because we're trying to create a safe place. Yeah. But to me, I think of that as like group therapy, you know, like <laughs> where... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right, right. It's like there are rules, but you can't trust people to uphold those rules. But because we have that safety net, we might be able to start exploring ourselves more. Right. Yeah. Um, but or even just a one on one therapy session. Right. You've got those boundaries. But at some point to really love deep, you've got to loosen those boundaries and decide to just love and let things unfold mm -hmm. yeah, and let and let yourself be seen right they say right. intimacy into me see yep mm -hmm. exactly so, so by letting ourselves be seen we also get you know we're often looking for that heart stability the stability comes from like Sheila was saying if someone sees me and understands and accepts me that's where the stability comes from not I've set it up that they think that I'm this pillar of the community. So, you know, right. I'm in this relationship <laughs> or they think I'm the perfect, perfect wife or, you know, they think highly of me. No, it's they know the strengths, the weaknesses. They see it and they love it and they accept it. Like that's that's right. what you experience. Right. Right. Um, I'm thinking as we're talking about this, an, an aspect of like when you're going through this process of preparation that there is this willingness to be open to all of that the universe spirit god right. gives you in terms of like um i know for myself when i started diving a lot deeper and just let that whole like being in a relationship and being a fa you know being a, a father and all that that it led me to leave number one leave the job that i was in leave the state that i was in and move Mm -hmm. right because i understood mm -hmm. that i was not happy where i was and that it right. was time that i was time to go and so what do you guys think about this i mean this that you that people may there, there may be unex un, un unintended consequences or unintended gifts i would say that come from this process has that happened with both any of you before well, when you say consequences, you mean like uh, like, like gifts, like like awarenesses, like as you dive down, you you figure out like you know what, I don't really like this job, or and I mm -hmm. and I've never really liked this job, and now I'm I'm really aware of it, right? That yeah. now because you're now becoming more connected into who am I as an authentic person, and well, so don't. yeah, yeah, no, I was, I was just gonna say I do think that connection with self and connection with others does have us recognize that everything else is just trappings, right? Right. Snaps. Yeah. Snaps. It's like, it's just the stuff we use. It's the tools, what, you know, our money, our careers, our, our belongings, our degrees, those are just tools because mm -hmm. ultimately all we want is to be loved, seen and accepted. <laughs> <laughs> right? Once we have that, it's like, ah, I can work anywhere. Ah, I can. <laughs> right. Make exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, well, I, I, you know, you you figure out things like, man, it's cold up here. You know, <laughs> I, I want to go someplace where it's warm. I always <laughs> like where it's warm. I want to be by water. I really love water. You know, those kinds of things. I always, yeah. I mean, perfect example for me is, you know, I always say, twenty five years in New York City, and I loved, love, love New York City. Yeah, I was so attached yeah. to that's where I needed to live. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until like my partner now, who I definitely feel like is a soulmate and, and we have such a, a intimacy and a core value matching. I, and I always say, I believe my mother brought him to me because I met him after my mother passed. And honestly, like I never thought I was going to be living a, a suburban life ever again in my life. And I honestly... <laughs> Like, because I'm with him, it's, it's like beautiful. Like, I love the peace. You, you heard me talking about the mm. forest and the, uh, and the hike. I mm. was never into that stuff 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm like, you know, I love my man. I love where he lives. I love where he goes. You know, I love these you trees. You relish in it, right? You stop worrying about the atmosphere and the things and the all. It's like, no, this is good. I feel loved. I feel seen. Rock you know, your like, world. 
<laughs> I love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, why don't we take another quick break? And when we come back, we can have we can each go around and have some final thoughts about this. Um, might have to do this, do another show about this, because I think there's so much it's such a rich topic. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think there's so much that we can talk about. Um, just this idea of soul love and and synchronicity when it comes to just not only our love relationships but relationships in general like you know why do people come in and out of our lives at certain times right Mm -hmm. so why don't we take a quick break and we'll be back with more of uh, this morning with solivity and final thoughts six years ago when i started solivity my vision was to support everyone in improving their life through the discovery of their passion and purpose, so they could become the best version of themselves, to battle fear and ignorance, and create a better world today. Get inspired to live your passion and purpose. Visit Solivity.com now. And we're back with more of This Morning with Solivity, and I'll go to final thoughts from you, Candice. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the takeaway here, and it's always, I feel like I always beat the same drum around, you know, self-love and exploration and unconditionality, letting, letting yourself be open to what love actually is, right? That there's an unconditionality, that it is unconditionality, it's, it's synonymous, and letting go of what you've been told being willing to explore what love is, what having a soulmate means, being willing to question for yourself. And a lot of times we, we don't feel like we have permission to do that. And so giving ourselves permission to be in exploration around it rather than feel like everything we've been told is just the truth. Mm-hmm. 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 I got chills on that one. That's so, that, I mean, seriously, that that's some, yeah. Break, break, break in that breaking that that fairy tale that, yeah. we, that we're sometimes told sheila what about you what are your final thoughts you know love never ends and i think that's really important especially when we're talking about romantic relationships because we talk about being in and out of love but true love is a frequency it flows through us the more we open to it the more We can feel those connections with different souls on earth. And no matter if you're already in a relationship and you want more intimacy, you can connect on a soul level, even if you didn't feel that initial soul um, attraction. Mm -hmm. Um, If you came into a relationship in a different way than that bond of soul love, you're able to shift that by opening up to love and to the soul of each person. So it doesn't really matter what the language is. If you go on a journey of, like Kendra said, self-love and soul love, it will be there for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was thinking about how both of everything that both of you guys were saying uh, uh, again relates to the be, do, have paradigm. Right. Um, And that I was thinking about, like, first, be the partner you want to be with, be Mm -hmm. that person. Right. Um, So if if you want to be with a person that completely validates and loves you, then for you to be that person, then guess what? You've got to start the process of loving and validating yourself in all of who you are. And so you do those things that you're led to do to become that person, including maybe seeing both of you at some point. (laughs) Um, And then the half part is, you know, the outcomes of that of that work. Right. Which, yes, can include someone coming into your life. But I think more importantly, first, enjoying the fruits and the feelings of openness of loving yourself that way. Um, I know in my own life, doing that work literally broke me down where where I'm literally feeling that love that I had never really felt before for myself, Mm -hmm. right? And then that 
open the door to openness from someone else loving me in the same way, right? So mirror, mirroring that. So that's my final thought. For you. Mm. Um, great show. Wow. Mm. This is a great show. We, we're going to talk more about this, everybody. Yeah. I mean, I think this is an important topic. I think it's, it's, it's part of what we do here at Solivity. Um, and another part of what we do here at Solivity is try to inspire and motivate you to aspire to being the person that you want to be. And Sheila, you've got a fantastic uh, class that's coming up uh, tomorrow, May 10th at 1 p.m. Eastern. That's free. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, I. it's perfect for today. I will be... Um, offering a master class on the spiritual quest network and it is soul love a new paradigm of partnership so we're going to dive deep into the various aspects of soulmate like twin flame karmic relationships soul mate and also um, counterpoint relationships and then we're also going to upgrade our beliefs from the old paradigm to the new paradigm and do a meditation to help you connect to your love on a soul level. Mm -hmm. And going to share a quick tab online where you can actually go online using the link that's in our chat. Uh, again, this is free. You want to go out there today so you can reserve a spot so that you can be part of this great masterclass uh, that features Sheila Applegate uh, again, 1 PM tomorrow uh at on wednesday and you will not regret going Yay. and it'll be a recording for 24 hours so if you oh, sign that, up oh, today so you'll have eight. it wow yeah it'll go live at 1 p.m eastern tomorrow but then if you registered then you have 24 hours to watch it well that's really cool wow yeah. so free and you can do a, a rewatch of it okay fantastic <laughs> um and of course uh Candice, you always have something going on. Um, <laughs> so can you tell us, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about uh, like your love coaching and other things that are happening? Yeah, so you know, I help professional women of color create and attract loving relationships. And right now, I've been um, putting together a digital course and um, you know my normal one-on-one -on -one intensive coaching. And so if anybody wants to go to my, oh, I love you, put it up. If anybody wants to go to my website, <laughs> you can learn more. I still have my project. It's homeostasis is happening. Everything that's going on right now is on CandaceHarperLoveCoach.com. And the Solivity 50 promo code is 50% off of anything that um, you want to purchase. And also if we, if we decide to work together, you do have to apply to work with me one-on-one. -on -one but you get to use that code and that's a huge amount of money off <laughs> coaching packages. <laughs> so, so Solivity 50 is the promo code for anything on my site. Oh, uh, well, thank you both for, you know, supporting everyone in creating a higher quality life. Um, you know, I know that everyone, if you, if you take anything from Sheila or Candace, you will not regret it. In fact, you'll be empowered from it and you'll be living a better life uh, with passion and power. Um, thank you both for being here. Really appreciate thank it. You. Um, yeah, another that great show. <laughs> um, listen, everyone, we want to again thank you for joining us for another episode of This Morning with Solivity. We hope that you come back and join us every weekday at 8 a.m. Eastern for our live broadcast. Or you can listen Thursdays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific time on KMIT 1490 AM radio for all of you out on the West Coast. Don't forget to get the KMIT app, too, because you can listen on their application as well. Until next time, keep having real conversations with passion and purpose and create a life full of high quality living today. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs>
any reproduction or republication of all or part of this is expressly prohibited unless Affinity Global LLC has explicitly granted its prior written consent. All other rights reserved.